we're spending the next 72 hours in Taos, New Mexico. Cody's afraid of heights. No, I'm not. I'm just afraid of heights that aren't touch, attached to something. Meandering through the downtown historic district. Basically what you're saying is we're gonna become addicted to this. Right, yeah, I think you'll have fun exploring like the flavor possibilities. White water rafting down the Rio Grande. Woo! Forward! And rising over 5,000 feet above the land of enchantment with views that will leave you speechless. So crazy, we're just in a basket. Just floating around, floating around. there in the basket. We're in historic downtown Taos, and we're gonna be checking out all of the local art, the shopping, and the cafes in this area. Plus, you get this awesome live music as you walk around. I can smell all these flowers right now. It does smell really nice. Every single time we're in a small town like this, my favorite thing to do is to find the outdoor store. And guess what? We found one. Mud and flood. Good thing about stores like this is they give you all the lowdown of the things that you need to do in the area. Hey. Kelly's actually ending up with something. I know, I'm sitting here contemplating. Where am I gonna put this? Now that I think about it. <laughs> we'll get rid of one of the other hats. You have, to, you have to pass it on, that's what you have to do. Yeah. You really All like right, it. All right, I'll get it. If go. I don't get it, I'm gonna think about it and then be mad. Is my face shaded? Yeah, okay, fully cool. shaded. You look cute Perfect. in that hat. <laughs> the sweet lady at the outdoor store recommended we go to Chocola, which is a chocolate bar. So we have to go check that out, obviously. And she was also telling us that this chocolate bar has won either gold, silver, or bronze in chocolate competitions across the whole entire nation. scratch made organic fair trade unless it's a curated bar from another company gotcha. and usually those are really well made too so. Yeah. so which chocolate bar is it that y'all continue to win your gold silver and bronze yes yeah, so we've won awards for pretty much any bean that we use i mean belize was one of the more recent ones you can see here bolivia is one of my favorites these ones are actually wild wild harvested cacao so what we do here is single origin chocolate. It's like the craft movement for chocolate, and like how craft beer or craft coffee is a thing. So what it is really is that we're sourcing beans directly from farmers. We're making those relationships ourselves, and we're doing the roasting of the beans, the grinding, all of that here in house. And it also allows you to have a lot better quality to kind of bring out the flavor notes you want to bring out, and to really find out like what what your tastes are, right? Because a bean from Madagascar is going to be way different of a profile than say a bean from Tanzania. So basically what you're saying is we're gonna become addicted to this. Right, yeah, I think you'll have fun exploring like the flavor possibilities in single origin chocolate. Um, this is gonna be a problem. I already know it's gonna be. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Nice. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we're gonna get some. We'll notice that there are like notes on it, so we'll see. throw this one in here. I think you should try it. I think you'll like it. Is that the good tea? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let me know what you think. Thank you. Inspiration. Right on. Oh my god. What right. to next? I gotta go check this chocolate. Oh yeah. So we did get a chocolate bar, and we're gonna have to put it in the refrigerator. Oh yeah. Because it will melt if we don't. Whoa. Yes, we have been grocery shopping lately. Just there, uh, there. If you have a big rig, there is RV park in here. You could put a big fifth wheel back here if you really wanted to. So we thought we'd get a quick beer at Taos Mesa Brewery. Hey, good. good, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing really good, thanks. I'm Constance, and there's our beer menu up here. Okay. We'll give y'all a second to ponder. This is so cool. Isn't it yeah, fun? Yeah, this is really pretty cool. It's fun to go, so there is silverware on like some lots of stuff and then I'll catch people trying to pick it up thinking it's their silver. It's fun. We well, hear y'all's beer is amazing, by the way. It is, it is good. It's very good. Even our non-alcoholic beer is good.
nothing better than a cold beer when it's been really, really hot. Yeah, it's really nice in the early mornings here, but at about noon, that sun starts coming all the way up over and it heats everything up. But rain does come in the afternoon and it cools it off again. This is also on one of the places recommended to eat here. And I will have to say, after looking at the menu and seeing the food come out, it looks very, very good. I wish that I was hungry because I would be ordering something right now. Really wish we would eat there, but we do have plans to eat somewhere else this evening. Kelly and I might eat here while we're still in the area. There's definitely no shortage of good food around here, that's for sure. We just arrived at our camp. Now the entire time that we're staying in Taos, we'll be at the Taos Valley RV Park, which is located in town, but it's off the main highway or the main strip. So you kind of get a little level of privacy when it comes to the road noise and traffic. But we've been at the electric and water only camp spots and they do have full hookup pull through right across from us. And then on the perimeter of the campground, they have primitive spots, which is no water, no electric, nothing like that. So they kind of offer a, a roundabout, whatever you need, they have it all. But if you don't have a fully enclosed vehicle like ours with your own shower, they do have showers here and they have laundry, which we used the other day, very convenient. I will say I did get my clothes clean and I forgot to mention, they have tent camping spots. So if you have a tent, you can stay here as well and enjoy the whole area. But since we're back at camp, we're gonna go ahead and shower and get cleaned up for dinner. And while we let Kelly shower first, cause you know, ladies first, gotta be a gentleman here. I was gonna tell you all the history of Taos and why it's even here. The history of Taos is extremely rich, but I'm gonna try my best to condense it into just a few seconds. So back in the 1540s, when Spain had control of New Mexico territory, they were sending expeditions north looking for the seven cities of gold. They never found those cities, but what they did come across were the native people who lived in these ancient Pueblo buildings, which they called Taos Pueblo, and that's how Taos got its name. The natives there allowed the Spanish to settle outside of their community so that they could trade. And the natives that lived there when the Spanish first came in contact with them still live there to this day. And those buildings are over a thousand years old. I think it is the oldest continuous settlement in North America. However, I think Kelly is done with taking a shower and I think it's my turn. Tonight for dinner, we chose Medley and it's more north of Taos, but the reviews looked amazing and we're gonna check it out. server just told us about an amazing cocktail described it so beautifully and it's how was it described honey i'm just going to read it for you it's called mint condition it is a bourbon and what they do is they freeze coconut oil pour the bourbon on the coconut oil muddled mint i don't know what that word is and they missed orange flower water oh my god ricky don't lose my number i think it's vicky <laughs> Wow. I attended bar longer than this girl's been alive, and she blows me out of the water. Right? Oh my gosh. Our appetizers just arrived. We have lamb chops with golden raisins, cumin, and some other things I cannot pronounce. And then we have a chilled tomato and peach soup with cucumber. I can't really taste, no, I can taste the peach. For the main course, I have steak frites with a Parmesan truffle fry. And Cody has a sausage meringues with Spanish rice. Actually, can I just take that piece right here? Yeah. Can I dip it in the sauce? Don't dip it. Don't dip it. That is so tender and so flavorful. That is melt in your mouth. This is an eight ounce hanger steak. Amazing. <laughs> Good morning. One of the coolest things to do when you're in the Taos area is of course raft the Rio Grande. Today we're rafting down through the race course. It's probably the most popular short day trip 
in the region, and we're gonna be floating down this river with big river raft trips. You ready, honey? But they said we're supposed to meet them here at this uh, Rio Grande Gorge Visitor Center and looking for a van that says big river raft trips. And we're I don't early. see them. We are? Hey, better early than late. Normally we're late or right on time. This yeah. is your guide, Brian. Okay. Brian? You're doing the race course, you're stuck with me. Sorry about oh, that. Hey, Brian, worry. Cody here. <laughs> Cody? Yeah. My wife, Kelly. Hi, Kelly, how are you? Nice to meet you. Good, how are you? So, Brian, can you tell us a little bit about the race course? It's a nice uh, class three stretch of white water. When the water's high, there's some big, fun waves in it. Spectacular, awesome. One of the rapids will step up to a class four. Right now, at this level, around 310-ish or so, then there's some uh, really fun maneuvering to do, a couple good surfing waves in there. And right now, this is middle of July. This is your more steady class threes, class two water levels. Your class four and upper class threes come in May and June, right? Yeah, as a general rule, late May, early June, although things seem to be coming off a little earlier these days. Gotcha. Looks like we're ready to go, and this is gonna be a three hour float. Howdy, y'all. Hi. Y'all doing the float too? Yes. Heck yeah. Hey, guys. I forget your name also. Oh, Cody. Cody. Billy. Yeah. I'm okay. playing. I'm playing, bro. I'm just like, come on. <laughs> Every single time I'm in one of these vans, I feel like I'm back in daycare. I know. School or daycare or something. So it'll take just a minute to unload the boat, hand out life jackets, and then I'll get ready to go. So Cody's our lead paddler. Oh heck yeah man. So I'm nervous about in. that. His paddle goes in, everybody's goes in. When his comes out, everybody's comes out. It's a day. I'm hanging in the sunshine. You should hit me with a splash gun so I cool down. Won't you come on over? We can party in the sun's town. Baby, let me buy you a drink while we're dancing and playing. I can go for some we need you. We need you. We need you. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Was it cold, brother? It's cold, isn't it? Okay. first stop for the day. This is where we're going to enjoy a little snack and swim. And I could not fathom how insane this would be if the water was up to its peak. Oh, I know, right? Y'all actually have an age limit whenever the water gets up higher, right? Right now the age limit is six. If they're uh, cognizant, we'll take them slightly younger, uh, younger up on the flats. 
And I'm not sure what their uh, age limit is when it's higher, but it's probably about 12 to 15, somewhere in there. It gets wild, so yeah. this time of year is pretty good for anybody that just wants to be introduced to whitewater rafting. Yeah, this is pretty fun. This is nothing really crazy. Hey, this is the same butterfly we have in Arkansas. Is it following us around yeah. the same one? I think so. I don't think we mentioned, but this is a four and a half mile trip. If you do the race course section, it is from nine to 12. That is uptown high rent there, brother. Yeah, these tables, they work well for things like this. And uh, I'll set them up like hors d'oeuvres so you can get hors d'oeuvres out of the kitchen. And then you can sit up, put your dish buckets on them. Renee finally caught the beautiful butterfly. Wow. Hi, dear. Hi, Frankie, my friend. And this guy's having a blast over here. <laughs> If you choose Big River Raft Trips, they provide you with all of your snacks. You do not have to bring anything with you. A riverside snack. Riverside snack. Oh, yeah. that sounds fancy. We got tortilla like chips, that. salsa, raisins, mixed nuts, water, Gatorade, oranges, leather, fruit strips, cookies, anything you could ask for. They've got it here. After a great little snack, I didn't really have anything, y'all. <laughs> I was flying the drone the whole time. But how was the snack? It was good. Was Very it good? good? Yeah. Good, good snack. Yeah. Little pick you up. How was your snack? Paddle. It's good? Was swimming? Yeah. Was that yeah, the best part, go. swimming? Yeah. Hey, okay, give me some. Boom. <laughs> and we're surfing. Whoa, that feels good. <laughs> I think we're doing better than when we did it in the ocean. What, surfing? Yeah. He doesn't like it because it's too cold. You're strong, brother. You can do this. Whoa. We got, everybody on we got the a full boy. Lean in. You're right, babe. Yeah, you're right. Left forward. Left forward. Left forward. Ah. Nice. Thank you very much. Yeah, Smooth operator it, back here. Yeah, you do have AAA, right? <laughs> we'll take the insurance card. Oh, so, we need to make it through that slot right over there. That we slot bump, right there? Yeah, if we bump this big rock, the, the black rock, it will flip the boat. Oh, this is working. This is working. <laughs> so, y'all notice this rock right here? This one? Yeah. This is Baby Huey. This rock originated from the top of that white scar underneath the tallest fir tree on the skyline. Oh. Highway department guesstimates that it was going 50 miles an hour when it hit the highway. But a crater that was 45 by 45 by 20 foot deep in the highway before bounding out of that crater like a tennis ball over the river and embedding itself in the canyon wall. Oh, if you oh, look up bad. into that, crack right there you can see how it pulverized the quartz site yep. as it was cratering wow. in my god when was that that was in uh, july of 91 july 24 of 91 wow. it started wow. to become unstable a few years back so the highway <laughs> department hired a contractor with that little stick right there to, yeah to install <laughs> that brace right there <laughs> there you go nice. that contract went for 1.2 we just arrived at the county line takeout and this is where we will be loading up the raft and taking the van back up to where we met this morning. That was so much fun. Hey guys, man, I want to tell y'all these people are awesome. What was y'all's names again? Steve and David. Steve and David. Y'all are awesome. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you guys. Yeah, we time. have fun. All right. <laughs> and make sure if you come to Taos area or Santa Fe and you wanna do some Rio Grande adventures, look up Big River Raft Trips. If you're interested in taking a trip with them, you can scan this QR code on the screen. It'll take you right to the website. Down the road a little ways is a winery and there's some very interesting history about wine in this region of New Mexico. Back in the 17th century, 
This is when Spanish still controlled New Mexico territory. Spain made it illegal to transport grapevines from Spain to here because they were trying to protect the domestic winemakers in Spain. The monks that were trying to have sacrament of wine realized that the Spanish wine was so expensive to import from Spain that what they ended up doing was smuggling grapevines, brought them here, and this is the first wine country in the whole entire United States, well before California planted their first grapes, say 150 years before. Cheers. Fun, fun on the river today, man. This first one is a Merlot. That's got a little bit of a bite to it. That's pretty good for a Merlot. Usually Merlot is really like mellow. And smooth. This is more like a cab to me. This next wine we're drinking is the Aaron, Aaron Dell. And I was just noticing these are the grapes right here where we're sitting at. These are luscious, luscious grapes. We're leaving with a bottle of Merlot and we're gonna head back to camp. We thought we would eat in the night and guess what we're having? We're having burgers. We have been craving burgers, but Kelly does not like thick burger patties. So to combat that issue, we bought a Lodge smasher thingy majigger. You just let this sit on the patty and it keeps it flat and doesn't make it all thick. Supposedly. We'll see how it works. It is kind of heavy. Eight inches. What are you doing, honey? I'm also going to fry some french fries. Kind of slicing those up and preparing them right now. Whenever she tells me, I'm going to go outside and this will probably be one of the first times you ever see me cook on a grill. Not really good at making burger burger patties. Don't let me down. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try my best. I can't even say it right. It's patties. Keep oh. wanting to say something else. Like what? Buns. Great news. The meat's finally thawed out. And I forgot to add, Kelly made her own little concoction of a seasoning that we're gonna mix the meat up with. And I've started frying my french fries. And I'm frying them in coconut oil, by the way. So there's the patty difference. Look at that. Those are mine. Those are I like mine to be real thick. And Kelly just gave me one of these test fries. They're so good. Fire. I'm just seasoning with salt and we're doing some Blanchard's seasoning. Let's get the grill started. I might have gotten just a little carried away. I'm slightly a pyromaniac. Hey, how are you going to pull the grate now? It's, I'm gonna do it with my hands. With your hands? Yeah. What? That's a big fire. How many of these fries have you eaten? A lot. Oh, I there's know. only two it's left. So hard. Especially because I don't cook fast. Man, those are good. So I thought I'd go ahead and let this cast iron meat smasher get heated up. Get a little season on it. I'm only gonna smash mine, but Kelly's, I'm literally gonna take the smasher and just leave it on top. See how that works. Now, do I know if I'm doing this correctly? I ain't got a clue, but we're gonna see what happens. It smells good. Well, honey, what do you think? You think I did okay? It smells so good. The fries I know are the bomb. Now you want mayonnaise on yours? Mayonnaise, mustard. You really want mayonnaise and mustard? One on one side, one on the other. This, honestly, turns out very nicely. Kelly even toasted the buns, got a couple pickles on there. Oh, you gotta get that final shot with the fries. Hank Hill would be so upset with me right now. There's soot under my boy's nails. You don't get that from a clean burning fuel. You don't get the rich smoky flavor either. Shut your mouth. I like charcoal. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, that's the best hamburger we've ever made together. That's the best burger I've had in a long time too. That alarm clock sound was not our normal alarm clock sound. Do not know where that came from. Very weird. We are up very early this morning because we have something that's been on our bucket list. We're about to check off and I cannot wait. Oh man, it 
It hurts right now. <laughs> this is the definitely the earliest we've been up in a while. Yeah. We don't know how to react here. <laughs> we didn't do anything, none of our normal stuff, because we have about a 20 minute, 30 minute drive. We do not want to be late. Today we are taking a hot air balloon ride over the gorge into the mountains. It is a beautiful morning so far. We're going to hope to see the sunrise over the mountain and it is going to be a great morning. We are using Rio Grande balloons today for this amazing adventure and this is Sol and he's the owner of this lovely establishment. Good morning. Now how many people does it normally take to get this set up? So typically I'll have myself and three people on the ground, okay. just kind of helping to set things up. So we're flying under a 275,000 square foot uh, balloon made by Cameron Balloons. Uh, the balloon itself weighs 700 pounds just for the fabric, the cables. The basket weighs about 1,350 pounds uh, full of fuel. So we're, we're taking off with about 2,000 pounds of aircraft weight. And then it's designed to carry up to about 2,000 pounds of passengers. Wow. So pretty, pretty big system. So I did not know that this would still be made out of wicker, this basket. So yeah, so wicker is still the best material for the application. It's lightweight, strong, easy to repair, easy to work with. They played around with different materials back in the probably 60s, 70s. Mm -hmm. uh, aircraft, aluminum, composites. None of that really gives. It doesn't flex at all. Um, so they ended up going back to wicker. It uh, handles, you know, landing shock. It, it, it's just really the best material for the job. And it's all hand woven, I guess you'd say. Is it woven or hand, hand woven? Yep. It takes, from what I understand, about two weavers, about seven weeks to build a basket this size, working, you know, full eight-hour days. And there's a bunch of stainless steel structure, kind of in in the the top frame, the bottom frame, but the the fill-in material is all wicker. Shubu rattan. All right, a little bit of fire on three. One, two, three. <laughs> that is fine. It feels real good. <laughs> All right, it's a little chilly this morning. <laughs> if I could have everyone gather kind of down by this end of the basket here, I'll kind of explain what we're gonna do here. So once we're done talking, we're gonna tip this basket over on its side. We'll attach the balloon to the basket. Uh, these guys are gonna drive out right now while I'm talking, kind of deploy the balloon in a big long stretch of fabric. Once we get everything laid out, hooked up, we're gonna turn these two red inflation fans on, start inflating the balloon full of cold air. Once it's full of cold air, just laying on the ground, I'll turn my burners on, shoot some fire into the balloon. That will heat that air up, make it buoyant, kind of stand the balloon upright. I'll probably have a couple people get into the basket while it's still on its side before I stand it up, and I'll, I'll show you what that looks like once we tip it over. If you're not already in the basket, when it stands up, that's pretty much your sign to come get in the basket. There is no graceful way to get into these things. Just kind of have a seat on the edge, switch your feet, and just climb on in. You'll see that we have mm. these nice rope handles mm. along both sides of both compartments. If you feel like you want to hold on to something while we're flying, those make good handles. You can hold on to the edges of the basket, the, the uprights as well. When it's time to land, I'm going to have everyone face backwards, away from the direction we're going. We'll get a hold of these rope handles out in front of us. Bend your legs like you're doing a wall sit. Just kind of lean into the wicker behind you. You probably notice that we don't have wheels. When the basket touches down, it'll stop for a second, do a little hop, hop, hop until it comes to a complete driving. halt. Well, well, we'll get this thing tipped over here. One, two, three, four. There's, there's another oh, three and a half. Three and a half.
Side there, yeah, just hop in. Maybe on our side. Front side? Yep. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Stressful. <laughs> How high are we up now, Sol? We are about 2,600 feet above the ground. Oh. 9,600 above sea level and climbing. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. Cody's afraid of heights. No, I'm not. I'm just afraid of heights that aren't touch, attached to something like a I just mountain. It's so crazy we're just in a basket. Just floating around, just floating around. there in the basket. When I saw him this morning, he was all cool and collective. Now he looks like a child. He is so <laughs> giddy right now. Yeah. This might be one of the coolest things I've ever done. It is the coolest thing. This is the coolest. This is probably the greatest day of my life <laughs> right now at this moment. Yeah, I agree. So, Sol, the different elevation is different wind directions, and that's how we dictate which way we're going? Correct. So I have control over up and down. Mother Nature does the rest. Whatever wind layer she provides, I can use to kind of navigate where I want to go. In this area, mountainous region, right? So we have pretty interesting weather. We'll have cold air draining out of all the little mountain valleys behind you. Cold air draining down the, the San Luis Valley, kind of parallel with the gorge. And then up high, we'll get into our sort of prevailing winds for the day. Right now, we're going east. When we took off, we were going south. Intermediary early mm -hmm. layers, we were going northwest. So on a given day here, you could have two, three, four, five different distinct layers going different directions mm -hmm. to navigate with. So pretty complex and, and good area to fly from a navigational standpoint. I'm just gonna take care of it. 
There's a lot of inner mechanics happening. Mm -hmm. There's some rigging in there, some ropes. The green rope and the black rope go up through a series of pulleys on my side of the basket, up in the balloon, shoot over to the, the far side of the balloon, connect up to little vents. Mm -hmm. Oh side. yeah, look at those little... So if you pull one, opens up that vent, spills little a little jet of air out the side and <gasps> rotates us. Black one goes the other direction. Red rope connects up to the edges of that round vent all the way in the top. If I pull on that, you can see the edges kind of dancing a little bit. Uh huh. Yeah. That's one of my flight controls. It lets a little bit of hot air escape, starts a descent. Wow. It really is peaceful up here. Mm -hmm. Relaxing. I've calmed down a whole lot. I'm not nervous anymore. Really? Really? Yeah. Yeah. I feel good. <laughs> it it kind of feels like a simulation. Like it's not yeah. even. We're not even up here. Yeah. <laughs> we're, just, we're just hanging out, man. We're here for the ride. Goggles on us when we weren't paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> scenery is amazing. So he's actually done a hot air balloon. Where, where did y'all do one in Cooperstown, New York? Okay. And yeah. this is better. Yeah. I mean, it's different. It's different. Mm -hmm. it, it, yeah. There's just, exceptional yeah. scenery here. It's yeah. Just amazing. This is definitely a great way to scout out camping spots. There's several right along the gorge here. I really want to camp like right over there. And there's nobody there, like, so we know we could get it. I'd be on land, Bureau of Land Management. So we're right over the Rio Grande River Valley Rift second longest rift valley in the world. First one's in Africa. Uh, this basically goes all the way down the whole state of New Mexico. Two sides of the state are slowly moving apart. And the Rio Grande basically follows that sort of rift valley all the way down to southern New Mexico. So I'm going to get us right over the river and I'm going to kind of drop down. I don't know how much time we'll spend down there, but we'll see if we can get... Oh, we're going down there? Mm -hmm. Oh! Man, you got skill. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're not joshing, right? You're really, you're really talking about trying to do this. Okay. I'm just like, where are we going to land? <laughs> are we not landing? Uh, I don't know. We're going down real smooth and real quick. like no man's land like people don't come down here <laughs> Well, I guess I need to pick up my bag if we're really <laughs> dipping it in the water. Wow. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Good job, man. <laughs> so I was flying yesterday. Oh, yesterday. Yeah. One of my passengers looked over at me just like wide eyed and was like, You're a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> you are, right? Add that to the plane. Yeah. Right. yeah. Exologist, right balloon pilot, <laughs> wizard. Yeah. Yeah. Parker. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. He asked me how it was compared to Cooperstown. I said they were different. Now it's just spectacular. <laughs> so good. Unbelievable. I can guarantee you, you are not getting this anywhere else. Yeah. No idea. You have that level of control. <laughs> when I say this is one of the best flights in the country, it's like. I'm kind of humble about it, but this is such a special area to fly. Yeah, you should bring yeah. more. <laughs> but there's days where we'll come out of the gorge and there's like 20 bighorn sheep oh, sitting there, wow. falcons yeah. flying by. It's oh, yeah. super yeah. special area. Yeah. 
Well, and I thought you were just gonna kind of like hover like a little below, like a little bit. Cry. Since I've been on that, I got cry on every flight. <laughs> it's so special. This is officially the greatest days of our lives. <laughs> Oh, that's the golf course. That's where we're landing. Yes, yeah, the that's we're landing the right there. We landed oh, at the golf okay. course there. Are, are those our friends right there? And so. Oh, oh yeah, there they are. That's the crew. Like, oh, Good, morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good <laughs> morning. That that tree is looking. I do see the tree. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Down to or uh, sucker. Here. So I'm gonna get ready to land us. I think just on the other side of this little fence here. Would it be okay if I landed here? Thank you. <laughs> Alright, little bump as we touch down. We're gonna go right on the road. Okay. Are we like this? Like, yeah. what are we like, we're just bending right now. Just give me Bending and hold straps. <laughs> we're going down. Oh, 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 do you want me to grab <laughs> you? Right by the road. Oh you don't gosh. get any easier than this. That was not bad at all. Trailer, I didn't. <laughs> and did I'll figure out a way to turn around, come back. Uh, there's a little driveway that comes in here. <laughs> Landed but right in a neighborhood, pretty much. <laughs> you ever had a balloon landing in your yard before? No. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I've never cool? been so close to one either. Oh, yeah. check it, check it out. Way to keep up. Yeah, know, right? Good job. Nice. Can I get yeah. right under here and just stand by that electrical box? We're gonna lay the balloon kind of straight down that way. All right, the top is coming out, Charlie. It'll probably go right over you guys. If Brian, if you can kind of keep your eyes on that fence post too, Bonnie, let's get you on that side. I'm not worried about anything over here. Just off the fence, off the electrical boxes as much as possible. Yeah, Charlie, go hard that way if you can. Coming down. Oh, he's gonna be strong. How are we doing? Good? Yep. You'll go. You got it. Awesome. Good. Nailing it. Perfect. Wow. Good job, Charlie. Nice. Just enough space. I thought you'd want this big open area. And it's like, nope. <laughs> We'll take a half an acre and just use it. Or normally this whole basket is supposed to fall over and these take the impact. He's so good, we didn't even fall over. Didn't even use them. Yeah. Hi guys! Oh, Great to see you. Nice. Yeah. That works. Yeah, that's definitely awesome. Roll it. The teardown and the setup process is they have it down to an art. I told Cody it's like putting a tent back into a tent bag perfectly and now we're going to see them put it back in the bag so the balloon it's not called a balloon it's called an envelope we're learning terms now so we'll get charlie straightened out there what do i do oh so you're just going to dump it in yep there we go good job perfect and then let's get that middle belly pretty well Yep. So there's a, a fabric flap right there. We're gonna uh, gently place that over the top. Okay. Oh. Jump right up on top. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's like one last time I don't have to do it. I think it's gonna be on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's filming. I didn't yeah. know she was. <laughs> one, two, three. Yep. And this is gonna kind of really press it. Nice. There you have it. So we're back where we started this morning, the Rio Grande Bridge. This is the meeting location. But we're coming back here because the hot air balloon ride adventure is not over. We actually get a little treat now. Isn't it so pretty? 
Step right up, grab a glass of sparkling. We do have orange juice if anyone would like a mimosa. So I'll offer up the traditional hot air balloonist toast, which goes, the winds have welcomed you with softness. The sun has blessed you with his warm hands. For you have flown so high and so well that God has joined you in your laughter and set you gently back into the loving arms of Mother Earth. So cheers. Oh, Salud. Cheers. It's a beautiful flight this morning. <laughs> One of the greatest days of my life, hands down. I will agree, 100%. Yes. I would do it again in a heartbeat. Yeah, must do hot air balloon ride, and if you're in Taos, make sure you get with Rio Grande Balloons. Amazing. He is the only person that will take you into the gorge, and you can't top that. However, we'll catch you on the other. See you next time.